Hello, uh, welcome to the Occupational Health and Safety uh, Diploma Program Info Session. Uh, my name is Erin Ruggieri. I'm one of the marketing coordinators at BCIT, and our presentation today is me by Bobby Sidhu, our program head. Uh, but first off, I'm just going to share that the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. So our agenda today is a welcome and introductions poll, uh, a little video um, that talks about what OHS is, our presentation and program overview, and then some program advising information and some time for questions at the end. So I'm going to introduce Bobby and we can go into the polls, Bobby. Actually, maybe we should skip the poll today. Okay, it's small, yeah, it's not a small crowd, that's gonna be kind of weird and awkward. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. So okay. uh, why don't you play the video and then, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a new share over to the video. I love my job because I get fulfillment from it, knowing that people get to go home safe every night at the end of the day. Working with people, I mean, it's a huge part of what I do day in and day out. Uh, working with the juniors, the apprentices, even the executives on trying to help them understand their health and safety responsibility. The Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program at BCIT is second to none. It really prepares you for the on-site, real-world situations that you're going to come up against. And that's why I chose BCIT. BCIT's Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program is the most comprehensive program of its kind in Canada. Our students get in-class lectures and labs, but also hands-on experience and a practicum on-site to give them practical knowledge. Our students learn to recognize, evaluate, and control a variety of workplace hazards and worker exposures, such as noise exposure, lighting, fall protection, and any other chemical contaminants that might be found on the workplace. Every industry will require some type of safety. So whether I choose to stay in healthcare or move into oil and gas or into mining or into engineering, there will always be a job for health and safety professionals. Every day knowing that the workers get to go home safely to their family, to their children, that is probably the number one factor in me pushing forward to get this done properly and correctly every day. Okay, so we should be back to the correct presentation now. Uh, so Bobby, continuing on. Um, thanks, Aaron. And uh, so just uh, coming back from the video and uh, the poll that we would have done, um, just gives a bunch of examples of where is health and safety uh, practice, and it's really everywhere, right? What is health and safety? It's wherever workers are, we provide, um, you know, health and safety guidance, regulatory oversight, education to employers and workers. Next slide. So who is the program looking for? Well, we have two programs. We have a diploma and certificate program, but as someone, the job itself is someone who's a strong communicator and wants to use their skills to investigate, solve problems, all related to health and safety issues in the workplace. Typically our grads have about five years work experience um, because it is a, a mature role and responsibility having to deal with employees, um, employers, regulators, and the public. Uh, so we're looking with someone, we're typically looking for people with some job experience. Next slide. So we have two options, as I mentioned, our full-time diploma program. It's two years to complete. You're on campus Monday to Friday, um, four classes, plus there's work when you get home um, and on the weekends and exams. Um, and so that's uh, almost like a full-time job. So most, uh, almost all our students do not have other employment while they're in the diploma program. For working professionals, we do have the certificate program, and that's a part-time online associate. Uh, it's a two parts. Part one is a uh, associate certificate in the foundations of OHS, which is typically done in uh, three to four, uh, three to uh, six terms, depending on the pace you want to do it. Um, and then followed up by an advanced safety management certificate. Uh, that's the second part of it. 
And uh, as I mentioned, a lot of the time it's working professionals who want to continue to work and do, uh, um, and do school or part-time um, to get in either to expand their role in the safety career or get into safety while they're working. Next slide. Um, so uh, our first part, as I said, was, uh, you know, our certificate in advanced safety management, 15 courses. And, um, you know, once you've completed the two, the two, two of those two certificates, um, you're basically uh, eligible to meet the academic requirements of the uh, CRSP exam, um, which is an end goal for many OHS practitioners. Uh, so what did the diploma grads um, get? Well, they learn within our program, safety management, safety le uh, leadership, conflict resolution, um, OH, uh, operational uh, safety um, processes, technical knowledge. Um, it's a generalist role, role. You can work in any sector and our recent grads work in every sector out there. They're in government, they're in trades programs, they're in construction, they're in manufacturing, they're in transport, um, where they're in agriculture. So basically anywhere you have workers, you will have grads work. Uh, and uh, the jobs range from safety officer, uh, safety advisor, safety coordinator, to safety manager, to director of safety. We have graduates in uh, a full range of positions. Next slide. Uh, what is the diploma program like? That one consists of, uh, as I mentioned, full time, five days a week, usually about 8.30, 9.30 to about 4.30, 5.30. We have uh, case studies, we have uh, field trips, we have labs with protect with equipment in occupational hygiene, fire protection, ergonomics, individual assignments, group work. We have an industry practicum with, practicum with an industry partner where students will um, do a safety audit for an actual job site. And sometimes that results in employment as well, as well as field trips. And um, as I mentioned, doing observations of job activities. Next slide. And what do, uh, for networking, our program is very involved in networking. Uh, we do career fairs. We have um, a, you know, um, good relationships with the Canadian Society of Safety Engineering and the American Industrial Hygiene Association where events will are put on um, in conjunction with them, everything from uh, speed mentoring sessions. They have monthly meetings for with reduced or free student participation. Our students sit on their executive and they provide professional development even for students. Um, and there's a NIOSH week, um, a variety of local health and safety conferences for industry associations. And we do meet and greets and speed mentoring um, at BCIT as well, in addition to with the various um, organizations and lots of guest lectures. Yeah, almost weekly, we have industry experts coming in to talk to students. Next slide. So most of our students, I would say 70 plus, um, already have a bachelor's degree, about 10, 10 to 15% um, are usually people who are coming from trades or sponsored to work safe BC and the remaining are usually master's PhD or medical doctors coming internationally. The median age of our students is about 30 and up, but we have um, everywhere up to 50, 55. Um, we don't, uh, we accept anybody. I mean, mature professionals have a lot of experience and they're welcome into the program. So what is an OHS practitioner? We develop, implement, monitor safety management programs. We liaise with government. A lot of legislative um, interpretation and administration, developing safety programs, doing promotion programs, uh, coaching and leading committees like joint occupational health and safety committees, as well as uh, sometimes technical assessments such as air quality, noise, temperature, vibration, sampling. Now, that's not to say that a person does all of this. Uh, sometimes they may focus on a couple of program areas or they may, um, they may do all of it. It could be a generalist, it could be a specialist, depending on where you work. So in the day in the life, you can do inspections, you can write safe operating procedures, risk assessments, education and training sessions, accident investigations. Um, you can chair committees, meet with the regulator and sampling as I mentioned. So what is the starting salary? Um, currently, uh, the average salary for our students is about $75,000 um, for grads, uh, new grads, but it ranges depending on where they work from 65 to 95 is not, um, is not unexpected. Um, and students, lots of good job outcomes. I have students who are offered two, three jobs right now and they're choosing what they want to do. And experienced OHS grads um, can uh, get excess of a um, six figure salary or 100,000 plus, I should say, uh, as well as a lot of opportunity for contract work and independent consulting. Next slide. And as I mentioned earlier, job roles are things like OHS coordinator, uh, um, specialist, uh, manager, officer. 
um, director, advisor, consultant, right? It really depends where you work. Next slide. So 95% of our grads are employed within the two months of graduation, and the 5% aren't, that aren't are usually because they want to take some time off um, before they start work. Uh, currently, there's so many jobs, their students are pretty much guaranteed something as soon as they graduate. Lots of opportunities for advancement and professional development, um, and they can continue their education into things like environmental health, human resource management, environmental engineering, and MBA programs. Next slide. So who hires our grads? As I mentioned, it's everyone where there's workers and some places where there aren't workers because there are worker, uh, sorry, public um, machine interactions as well. So educational institutions, private consulting firms, health authorities, telecom, school boards, uh, cities, municipalities, uh, various industries such as agricultural firm production, construction, forestry, food production, manufacturing, government, oil and gas, transportation, um, office work. Next slide. Um, so here's a testimonial. I worked as a server and a landscaper before entering the OHS program, thanks to quality instruction I received from wonderful instructors, as well as wisdom shared by guest speakers. I'm ready to take uh, the next step. This program has prepared me for a long, rewarding career in the field of occupational health and safety. So that was from our recent grad, Adrian, who is uh, working in OHS. He had a uh, he graduated and he's, he has a position. He's working out there, so I think he's pretty happy with where he's landed. Next slide. So uh, for admissions, um, you know, this is uh, on the right there, you can see uh, BCIC's mandate about empowering people, shaping BC, inspiring global process, and we value excellence, diversity, inclusion, collaboration, innovation, and respect. Next slide. So our start dates are our certificate program, basically year round, we have three terms. It's open right now for our uh, September term. If uh, students are looking to register, you basically register for individual classes. And when you meet the requirements of the uh, certificate, you just apply to graduate. Our diploma program um, is open from October 1st to May 31st. Um, it's intake, uh, so it's closed for this year, but for the September 2023 academic year, uh, as of October, you can start putting in applications. Next slide. So basically what happens is you, um, you apply, um, you submit all your documents, you complete the questionnaire through the um, uh, apply online at bcit.ca. And then um, the admissions department checks to make sure that you meet the English 12 or equivalent chemistry 11, physics 11, or uh, math uh, 12 or equivalent and you complete the questionnaire. If you meet the minimum requirements, um, then at that point, uh, the application is then sent on to the department for review. Um, so basically uh, when you're submitting documents, um, you know, you have a couple options uh, for your copies. You can basically scan a picture of the official transcript, uh, transcript and upload it into the system, or you can download your digital transcript from your school when you upload it. Um, so, you know, we um, change in process over the years. Those are the two preferred ways. Mailing and transcripts is not recommended. Um, if you're a previous BCIT student, well, we have your grades in the system, so you don't need to submit those. Um, they can be directly, you just need to reference that those are the what you're using for your admissions and those can be accessed directly um, by admissions. Next slide. So um, admissions takes a look at those, uh, as I mentioned, um, those those documents and make sure you meet, you meet those minimum requirements. And then they forward it on to me and then we uh, rank and shortlist. Um, so we are a competitive entry program where we will look at the applicants and then select the applicants based on those admission requirements. Um, and then, you know, if you were offered a seat, you're sent an acceptance letter and you pay a commitment fee and you have a seat reserved. Now uh, you have until pretty much um, April, or sorry, the May 31st to get your, your documents in. Some students who don't have everything ready, but they're in the process. Uh, if they reach out to us, we will provide conditional acceptance if you are gonna finish an outstanding requirement after the admission date, but it's good to have a conversation uh, with the program if that's what you're doing. Next slide. And as uh, we said, some students like to continue on. We can, you can ladder your diploma into, for example, or if you want to continue on from BCIT for two more years, you can get a bachelor's in environmental health. Um, and others who want to work part-time will go on and do a bachelor's in, um, for example, business administration or operations management. Next slide. So we're here to support your success. We have a variety of resources available uh, for everything ranging from additional uh, indigenous services, 
Uh, we have a student financial uh, aid and awards for domestic students, uh, accessibility services for those who need additional support um, during exams or um, deliverables. We have health services, we have a clinic on site, we have counseling and student development, as well as we have a, a recreational services, a gym on site. Next slide. Um, you can drop in to program advising, either a phone call or a Zoom in person, the times are below, um, or you can send an email um, inquiry um, and program advising is great to reach out uh, to help students navigate the admissions process. Next slide. And I think that's it. We have some social media stuff here. Um, everything from the School of Health Facebook site, the Twitter page, Instagram, YouTube, um, and LinkedIn. And if you have any questions uh, directly about the program, you can reach out to me. Admissions uh, eligibility is uh, best to reach out to admissions because um, we at the program don't look at admissions. We don't look at applications once they reach, they, they're past the requirements. There's my email, there's a program advising email. Um, so email, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, or if you if your audio works, we can we can chat right now. Next slide. That is the last slide, Bobby. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> you no just problem. get so used to and saying then, next slide. Yeah, uh, I know. To re reiterate what Bobby said, uh, if you have any questions about occupational health as a career or as a field of study or what you'll be learning in class, that's that's directed at Bobby. Any questions on the entrance requirements, how to apply, how to get in, whether or not uh, you have the correct prerequisites for this, that is program advising. And uh, the hours that we posted on the previous slide may change for summer, so it's always best to check their website uh, before you uh, drop in or give a call. Um, also with program advising, I've always noticed that if you need an answer quickly, uh, the phone is the best way to get a quick answer from them. If you're willing to wait a couple of days, then email is, is totally great too, but uh, email does take a bit longer for them to respond than if you had called them. Uh, so I'm not sure if we have any questions. Uh, Darren's been placing lots of links in the chat. I know uh, Jesse has been uh, sending chat messages as well. Um, are there any questions? Feel free to unmute if you want to ask something. International students, there's a question about international students. Um, we do have seats for international students in the diploma program. Um, the fee is considerably more. So our typical fee for our domestic grads is about 15,000 and diploma is about 45,000, uh, sorry, international. Um, so there is that. Uh, you, the earlier you apply, the better in case there are um, any outstanding requirements or that you need to do. You will have to have your, your, your international credit, uh, credentials assessed. Um, and BCIT admissions can, and BCIT international. Um, so if we'll just, we can drop the link to BCIT international into the chat here, and they can also help with that as well. So I'll drop it. So if you have any specific questions on international students, we may be able to help you, but we do accept um, international students. That's great. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, it's good to have that link there. Yeah, it's, um, and not every program at BCIT and School of Health does accept international, but occupational health and safety is definitely one that yeah. will accept international students. So that's great. And I think Bobby also mentioned earlier that um, a lot of people have come into the program with uh, previous international credentials. Um, so this is a great program to look at for that. Yeah, and we have really good jobs. Sometimes it's difficult for international students to find employment, but our international grads have no problem finding employment. They're Wonderful. Quite successful. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I'm going to stop it there. And uh, for um, anyone who is wondering, and there's a lot of information we went through very quickly today, uh, you will receive a copy of this recording and a copy of the slide deck via email, uh, probably within about a week and a half of this session. So thank you for joining us today.